Hey there, Matt Walker here from the Choir Director Corner. Hope you're having an awesome day. And if you've been keeping up with my emails or keeping up with things on the website, you've seen we've got a lot going on right now. One of those things is the new Choir Director Corner podcast. Now, if you haven't checked that out yet, you sh certainly should. You can find that on any of the major podcast hosts, so Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, on Spotify. It should be up in on Amazon Music here very shortly. So we're Wherever you like to enjoy your podcast, check out the Choir Director Corner podcast. And if you'd like to check it out on the website, you can simply go to choirdirectorcorner.com forward slash podcast. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this video today is because from my last podcast episode on the top 10 tech tools for teaching choir virtually, I had a follow-up question, and that was about musictheory.net. And the question was, how do you create an assignment then for your students on musictheory.net? Because there are lessons, and then there are exercises that students can practice, but then you can actually go in and create an assignment for them. So today, I'm going to do a little screen share to show you exactly how to do that. Here we go. Okay, so here we are at musictheory.net, and I'm going to go into the exercises. And then here, way down at the bottom, I scroll all the way down to the bottom, and that says exercise customizers. I'm going to click on that. Now, here are all the different exercises that are in musictheory.net. And so now you can choose which one you want to do. So say I want to do note identification. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. Now, there are some different options here. Uh, you know, which clefs do you want? Well, I want treble clef, but also bass clef. So I'm going to select both of those, and then I'm going to go back. And, you know, you can get into ranges. The default ones go above and below the staff. I like that, so I'm going to uh, keep that. And there's some lots of different settings that you can get in and play with. I have the accidentals turned on because I want naturals and sharps and flats and all of that in there. Um, next question, it will go on right to after the audio. Now challenge mode. Challenge mode we'll talk a little bit about here in a second. That it adds a timer to the exercise or to the assignment. So again, it's totally up to you. Okay. So once you have all of your settings here uh, as you want them, way down here at the bottom, there is a web link. So that web link is specific to the parameters of the assignment that you have just created. And so this is the link that you are going to send to your students for them to then work on the assignment. Okay. So if I click on that, it takes me right to the exercise, right? And so I'm actually going to take that and copy that. And we're going to use that here in just a second. Okay, or I'll show you where I, I use that to then set up the assignment. So then here's the exercise. So it's the number correct out of the number attempted. And then there is the percentage, right? So what I will do is I will tell my students, okay, you need to get uh, 10 of these correct. So you need, need to complete 10 exercises with, a, uh, with an accuracy of at least 80%. Right. And that's what I tell them. And you know, our school use Canvas, uses Canvas. And so that is what I put into the uh, assignment. And so then they will go through here. And so, you know, just for uh, an example, we'll go through and we'll do some of these. And so then as you get through and, you know, if you get one wrong, it will not go on. It will light up red and then it will make the student then correct that before it goes on. So, and it will count each incorrect response too. So, uh, it does really uh, make sure that they are answering things correctly before they are, are moved on. Okay. And so then we've got there. Okay. So let's say, let's say I've gotten my, my 10 responses, 10 out of 11, and I'm up over my 80% threshold. Okay. So then the student will then go and uh, submit this uh, to you as a response. So what they will do is they will come over here to the three dots. And, you know, if they ever get uh, too far into it and they know they're not going to get to that percentage, they can simply just click over here and reset the score. Okay. But to submit their assignment, they're going to come down and click on Show Progress Report. And so by clicking on that, this pop up box comes up. And so all of this, this is just kind of the statistics of the assignment. Doesn't really, uh, you know, nothing that they're really concerned about. They can check out and say, okay, well, I was six out of seven. There's my percentage again. 
Again, that's how much time I took. Okay, but what they need to do then is they need to type in their name here into this field. And so typing in first and last name and then click on sign report. And so then what happens here is you see this code. And so there's a couple of things uh, that they can do. They can copy that as a link or they can copy that as a code. So for submitting assignments, I have them copy the link. And I'll show you why in just a second. So they're going to copy that. Okay. And then what they will do then to uh, to submit that assignment is they will then, you know, they can email that link. Uh, they can put that into a response, you know, however you want them to transmit those. They can send that link to you. And then when you click on that link, it comes up with the information on their assignment so that you can see exactly what you are seeing here. So it works pretty well. Now, here's a little bit about how it works in Canvas. As I mentioned, my school uh, uses Canvas. Um, if your school uses Google Classroom or Schoology, I would imagine this can work in a very similar way. Right. So here is how my uh, assignment is set up. So when I create that initial assignment, that web link that we clicked on to try the assignment, I just copy that and I paste that directly into the assignment. So when they come in here and click on this, it will take them directly to that assignment. So that's what we want, right? And so I put all of these uh, instructions directly into uh, the assignment here in Canvas. So if they ever get lost, then they can come back to this, okay? But then when I... Uh, come down here with the options in Canvas, one of the submission type options, and you want it to be online. And then one of the options is website URL. Okay. And so what will happen, so I go over to student view in Canvas, and this is what the assignment looks like. So when the student comes in, they're going to click on that link again, and that's going to take them right to that uh, exercise in musictheory.net. They will go through the exercise. They will, as I showed you, they will copy that link that they get uh, from that, uh, from signing that response, right? And so then when they come back here, they're simply going to click on submit assignment. And then that brings up this pop-up box. And because you have selected website URL, you just click here and you paste. And it looks like a bunch of random letters and numbers. But if you scroll all the way back, it says www.musictheory.net. So what the program does is it takes those results and it actually makes it into a web link. And so then they just paste it right in here. They submit the assignment and then they are done. Okay. So if you were to then take that and paste that into uh, a window, right, or you were to click on that in your uh, when you get that uh, communication from your student, you know, no matter whether it's an email or whether it's in the uh, the assignment submission, you know, Candace and Google Classroom, you will come up with this exact report. And so it says progress report for Matt Walker. And so then it's got the score and then the time and all of that. So all of that information that you saw before comes right here to you in that web link. Okay, works pretty slick. So as I mentioned, you could also add a challenge mode to this. So I just want to show this really quick so you can see what this is like. So I'm back here in my assignment. I'm going to click on challenge mode. Now it gives me some options. So the first thing is the time limit. So this is for the whole exercise. It's not per question. Okay, it's for the whole exercise. So let's say I set the time limit for three minutes. Okay, and then there is a question limit as well. So I'm going to say 10 questions. Okay, and then uh, I can put in there, do I want them to have multiple attempts or not. And so I'm going to leave that on. And so then you can see what this looks like. So 10 questions, three minutes. And again, it changes that web link once I have changed that and turned on that challenge mode. Okay. So now I'm going to click on this. And so it says, tap below to start a challenge with your current exercise customizations, uh, customizations and your exi existing score will be reset. So if they've practiced it before then, it will automatically reset when they come into this. Before, the student had to go in and click on the three dots and choose reset, 
uh, score here it will automatically do it for you okay so if I click on start challenge and so you can see the timer is running so I'm just gonna really quick run through these almost there we're 8 out of 12 so that 10 questions is 10 correct questions it's not 10 questions whether they get it right or not it is they need to complete 10 questions on the exercise so I've done that okay so 10 out of 14 71 percent and it gives the time as well so you can do a couple of things here you can just take that percentage and transfer that into a grade or like I do you can say well 80 percent is your threshold if they get over 80 percent they get full credit for that exercise and if they don't get over 80 percent then they have to go back and redo that until they meet that threshold so that's totally up to you and so it's just a preference as to how you want to uh, want to grade it I would say you know if you're going to grade it by percentage I probably wouldn't do the timer um, you know I would just say okay you need to complete 10 correctly and then whatever percentage correct you get that is the percentage that you get as far as your grade okay and so then again they can go and view report and just like before they are uh, you know entering their name and signing the report and then sending that submission to you so that is how the challenge mode works with musictheory.net. Well, I hope you have found this musictheory.net assignment tutorial helpful. If you have any other questions about musictheory.net or any of the tools that I talk about on the top 10 tech tools for teaching choir virtually podcast, uh, just let me know. Uh, my email, matt at choirdirectorcorner.com, or you can just comment uh, below this video or catch us over in the private Facebook group, which is choirdirectorcornergroup.com. That web link will take you directly over to the private group. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you real soon.